Heard that the poor little thing had to take him ill, and the doctor called. I feel the worst. The doctor is with her now. She has a terrible fever. I really must get back with this Take medicine. Take a pledge. Take a pledge. No more. It's all over the quarter. Three people died in McDougall Street. One is this, uh, the other smaller. What's her name? Uh, Jenny Given. I know her. She posts for me many times. Mm -hmm. And then there was this um, cocktail stand I'm on it. Hi, I really must go. Oh, then John's in my bed. He'll need it. She has one chance in, say, ten. And that chance is for her to want to live. Does she want to live? I'm afraid your friend has made up her mind. She's not going to get well. Hasn't she anything on her mind? She, she wanted to paint the big of me for some day. Paint? Does she have anything on her mind worth thinking about twice? A man, for instance. A man? It is a man one. Doctor, nothing of the kind. Well, it's the weakness then. I'll do all that science will allow. But when a patient begins to count the number of carriages in her funeral procession, I seriously doubt the value of medicine in that situation. Is there anything I can do? If you can get her interested in anything other than her illness, interested in life. I'll promise you a one in five chance for her instead of a one in ten. good chance of beating this. A very good chance. But you must fight it. Don't you want to get back to your paintings? Let me make you some broth with port wine in it. So I can finish my drawing by the editor's deadline and I can take care of you. I won't be needing any more broth. I'm tired of fighting. I'm tired of thinking. I just want to lose my whole life right here. Go sailing too. Yeah, like those four tires.
Will you promise me to keep your eyes closed and not look out the window until I'm done working? I must turn these drawings in tomorrow. I need the light or I would draw the shade down. Can you draw in the other room? I want to be here with you. Tell me as soon as you finish. I want to see the last one fall. Let's not talk about these silly things anymore tonight. <laughs> Bobby Vaughn, I'm Pansy. I'd like you to close with the old hermit miner for me. I need to turn these drawings in tomorrow. Could you please open the door? You interrupted my work. I was painting my masterpiece. For 25 years, I have waited for inspiration. And now you have chased it away again. What is wrong, child? I need you to come upstairs and pose for me. Why should I go all the way up there when I can pose from here? I can't leave John be alone. She's hysterical. The doctor said that death could come at any time. But the dumb doctor knows. John's his last to will to live. No matter what I do, I can't change her mind. John, she is a young girl. She has a whole life ahead of her. Spends the whole day staring out the window at leaves on the vine. What is that supposed to mean? She thinks that when the last leaf falls off the vine out her window, she will die. Ah. If there are people in the world that have foolishness to die because leaves, they, they drop from my confounded vine. No! I will not. Pose as a model for your fool hermit miner. Why did you allow such silly business to get in the brain of her? She's very ill and weak. And the fever has left her mind full of strange fancies. Very well, Mr. Bannon. If you don't care to pose for me, you needn't. But I think you're horrible. Just go back to work on your beautiful painting. For just a second moment, we said I would not pose for you. Go on, I come with you. I have been trying to say that I am ready to pose <laughs> the whole time you are standing here. Thank you. 
Pull it up. I want to see. The last one. I thought it was Jerry Salter. I heard the wind. You know, Salter. Think of me if you won't think of yourself. What would I do? Raise the shade, Sudi. I know you're not sleeping. Stay there to show me how wicked I was. It's a sin to want to die. You may bring me some broth now. Yeah. And some milk with a little port in it. No. I need a hand here first. And pack some pillows around me so that I can sit up and watch you guys. That was wonderful. Thank you. And thank you for coming, Doctor. My pleasure, young lady. You keep getting rest like I told you. I'll show the good doctor out. Judy. Someday, I hope to paint the Bay of Naples. She's out of danger. The Christian in care now, that's all. Unfortunately, now I must see another case. Uh, you've probably heard of him. Behrman, his name is. Some sort of artist, I believe. Pneumonia, too. He's old and weak, and the attack is acute. There's no hope for him. He goes into the hospital to be made more comfortable. It's all about old Vermin. Is it true? Yes. He passed on this morning. I've just come back from the hospital. So, how is Miss Johnson doing? She's going to be fine. Just fine. 
God. I was beginning to feel that I only have bad news to gossip. I'm so glad. Send her my love. Oh, hi! Hey. Hello, Sudi. I'm feeling much better today. Look what I started. It's going to be the warmest, warmest scarf in the village. It's incredible. Absolutely beautiful. What is it, dear? I have something to tell you, Chauncey. I've just come back from the hospital. Mr. Garman died of pneumonia today. He uh, was ill only two days when the janitor found him downstairs helpless with pain. His shoes and clothes were wet through an icy cold. I couldn't imagine where he'd been with Night. Was he out in that awful storm? Yes. They also found his lantern and a ladder, some scattered brushes, and a pallet with green and yellow colors on it. Look out the window, dear, at the ivy leaf on the wall. Didn't you ever wonder why it never fluttered and moved in the window? Darling, it's Berman's masterpiece. He painted it there the night the last leaf fell. Thank you. 